Welcome back, Appleton North. My name is Dave Pennenberg, principal here at North High School. I cannot tell you how excited we are knowing that many of you are coming back for the start of the second semester. Appleton North was established back in 1995. It was built to have you here. All of us as a school community has worked really hard to make learning continue to happen over the last several months. As noted, Appleton North is a wonderful building, you know, a great place to be and makes it special. But actually what really makes it special is you, you, the students. You're the huge part of making Appleton North the place to be. We understand with everything that has gone on, much of it out of everyone's control, we need to take things one step at a time. We have all been navigating through this storm for some time. Now, each one of us, and really we're all in our own different situation, we need to work through this. Our goal to start the 19th is to take things slow, learn from every opportunity, and celebrate every time we reach the next step. While this won't be always easy, remember, we are all in this together, and all of us need to do our part to make this transition back to school successful. To start, what can you do? I know you're gonna hear this over and over again during this video, but it's really, really important. It's really about the three W's. And the first one is you need to wear your mask. We all need to wear our masks appropriately. That means over the nose and the mouth. We need to wait and social distance six feet apart we need to wash and sanitize our hands and the areas in the classroom that you're going to be sitting at when you come into the classroom and when you leave. And my associate principals will be getting into specifics on the safety, the schedule, and what the school day will look like upon return. Again, we all play a major role in making sure we continue to have the opportunity to be here. And I honestly can't wait to see all of you. Hello Appleton North, Mr. Hermes here. I uh, want to walk you through, along with uh, Mr. Lee and Mr. Werner, uh, what a day in the life will be like when we come back to school. So at this point in the process, all families have indicated uh, what learning model that you are going to be for second semester. Either all virtual, which means you'll stay uh, online and at home for the remainder of the semester, or hybrid and in-person. Now if you are a family who has selected hybrid or in-person, um, in an effort to make sure that our classes are as small and as safe as possible, we basically took the remaining students that uh, said they wanted to be hybrid and divided them into two groups, cohort AA and cohort BB. So all of you have been assigned to one of those two groups if you're a hybrid student. Really would encourage you, if you haven't, please go on Infinite Campus, check out in the student portal, student and parent portal, um, your schedule. Double check you know which cohort and learning model that you've been assigned. And as well as take a look at your schedule because as I'm gonna walk through, we have made some changes to the schedule that's really important that you know about. So if you're thinking of it uh, from, a, from a hybrid perspective, again, uh, cohort AA is gonna be in school physically on Monday and Tuesday. That's the two cohorts. If you are a cohort BB, right, you're coming to school on Thursday and Friday. So let's, let's take a class example. So if it's third hour, the AA students will be in person here at Appleton North, while the BB students and the families and individual students who have selected all virtual, you'll be in class third hour at the same time like we've been doing, um, but just at home. Or looking at it a different way, if you're, uh, it's Friday six hour class, the BB students are going to be physically here at Appleton North. Meanwhile, the AA students and the students who are all virtual are going to be attending six hour class at home. Now the school day itself, the schedule that we followed since the beginning of the school year remains the same. School runs from 815 to 350. It's really important students and families that you continue to understand that while you're 
Bell scheduled classes are at different times. The school day overall with our student support times in the morning and the afternoons still go from 8.15 to 3.50. Uh, similarly, uh, Wednesdays, even as we're coming back in hybrid, are gonna remain the same. Uh, the mornings on Wednesdays, students, all students will be at home. Our building during that time is gonna receive a deep clean because we're transitioning from students in cohort AA for students in cohort BB. Uh, so Wednesday mornings is when you've got your individual Canvas module work time. And then in the afternoon still, in, during student support time, is when you can connect with your teachers, get some individual help, uh, and continue to do your schoolwork on those afternoons on Wednesdays. So those parts stay the same. So what I want to go over now is talk about some of the changes that we're having to make in our school day and our schedules to ensure that we can return safe and healthy. So let's walk through some of those. The first major change that we're having to do while students come back to school, again, this is for students who have selected hybrid, is that our school is going to be a closed campus. What we mean by that is when students come to school, once you're here, you're here until you go home for the day. So in a closed campus setting, again, once you arrive at school, we want you to stay at school until you're done for the day. We've added some classes. So again, if you go in Infinite Campus and you look at your course schedule, you might notice some new classes. You're gonna see courses with the name Flexible in it. These classes are, are gonna be in periods four, five, one, six, on both Monday and Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. The reason they say flexible is, if you have these classes and these periods, you don't have to come for those classes. Now, if you need to be here because you're gonna ride the bus or you're being dropped off, we'll have a place for you. We'll have a class for you here. However, if you can get here late or leave early if it's at the end of the day, we encourage you to do that. And the reason we say that is not because we don't want you here, it's because it will only help us to reduce the number of students um, here in the building at any one time. So if you see a flexible release, you have that ability to be released during that time or fl flexible privilege. Even flexible study halls, if you see that in those periods you see highlighted on your screen, those are the classes that if you can not be here, you are able to do that. A second safety change that we're having to make with students coming back in the building is lunch. Obviously, we can't have lunch in our commons like we always do with four to 600 students eating or leaving campus at any one time. And so we have, as we've had all school year, a scheduled homeroom lunch period. All students will have lunch in homeroom. So this is how it's gonna work. First of all, thanks to federal funding, all school lunches are free for students. So there are free lunches available for you, or obviously if you choose to, you can bring your own from home. You'll notice soon on your class link, you'll see an app like the one you see here on the screen called Nutrislice. This will be the app in which you basically order your lunch. So let's say that I'm an AA student and it's Monday. You're going to have a lunch that you will have ordered through that uh, Nutrislice app. The way it'll work is you're gonna order one week in advance. So if I'm in that Monday homeroom, I had my lunch at, had been ordered, I'm then when I'm done eating, gonna get onto Classlink, go into the Nutrislice app, and order my lunch for that next Monday. And then our, our lunchroom staff are gonna gather your order, place it in a homeroom bucket, and we'll have that lunch delivered to your homeroom on that Monday. The final changes that we're making for our health and safety uh, measures with students returning in school is how we'll do student support times moving forward. So as I said previously, in our school day from 8.15 to 3.50, we have built in time, both before and after school, called student support time. Now that we're returning to hybrid learning, we wanna kind of talk to you about how this is going to work. So all before school student support time are going to be virtual meaning you're gonna meet with your teachers via Google Meets. A change is the after school student support time. For those students who are hybrid learners, on your day, again, AA or BB, 
you can do your student support time in person or again, all virtual. We're going to use FlexiSchedge like we've used in the past for Homeroom to schedule your student support time meetings with your teachers, whether that's virtual or in person. Like we've done in the past, if you are requested students via FlexiSchedge by your teachers, you are required to attend. As we have implored you since the beginning of the school year, this over an hour before school and an over an hour after school, four days a week, plus the large afternoon chunk at the end of the day on Wednesdays are great times for you to connect with your teachers, stay on track, get extra help. Hi guys, hey, it's Patrick Lee, Associate Principal of Student Services. I'm in charge of attendance and discipline for those of you who have not met me. I'm gonna to talk to you about what the school looks like when you're coming back. Um, and for those of you who are driving in the, uh, in the morning, uh, you're going to come through the Commons entrance, all right? And the Commons entrance is going to have everything you need. You're going to be using hand sanitizer. There's wipes, things like that. You'll be moving in through there. Coming into school, those of you who are driving, um, you'll want to get a parking pass from Student Services. Um, come in, fill out a form. You're going to write down your name, your car, license plate number, and we're going to give you a student parking pass. Uh, there is no charge. Uh, we just want these in everybody's rearview mirror as you park in the lot. Uh, and we will accept everyone. In the past, you had to buy a parking pass. We had to limit them because we had a limited number of spots and too many kids who wanted to park there. Now, that's not a problem. Even sophomores can park in the lot. But we do desire you to have the pass. Please come into Student Services to grab that. Again, no charge. Uh, those of you coming in on buses, you can go through two entrances. One is the main entrance, that's the North High School entrance here. Uh, or you can use the student services entrance coming through there, depending on which direction you're going. Those of you coming on the bus, you should have received information from lamers as to where to sit, uh, that you have to wear a mask, uh, and behavior on the bus. It's going to be different than the past, because in the past there was far more kids on the bus, and uh, there was not assigned seating, and that's all going to happen with the lamers buses. Be prepared to have your IDs. Uh, those of you who do not have your IDs, um, you'll be asked to come into school and get one from Miss Dickinson. We can work that out with you. Now for school start times, remember the buses will show up a little bit before 920. And at the end of the day, it's 350. So um, in the morning, like before 920, there's an actual period of time Mr. Hermes went over it. And that's virtual help time from your teachers. If you need help from your teachers, you can use FlexiSched, like he's talked about, to organize a time to get together with your teacher virtually and meet with them then. Now, if you want to meet in the afternoon, you can meet with them personally, physically, through FlexiSched. And uh, that's the time before the 350 period at the end of the day. Next thing you need to know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, sanitation. It's uh, safety mitigation strategies, long term for it. Uh, when you come into school, you'll be using hand sanitizer to sanitize your hands. You'll do that on the way into school. There's signs at the doors as you come in to wash your hands, and you'll be using sanitizer. So please stop and do that. When you get to the classrooms, you'll have already washed your hands. You'll see that there's another opportunity to do the same in the classrooms. And you'll want to, and you'll get tired of doing this, but it's the safest thing we've got going here. You're going to want to wipe down your desk. You're going to take a wipe from a very large bin of wipes. These are sanitation wipes. It has a chemical on it uh, that sanitizes the desk. And it's not too harsh on hands, but it does sanitize it. You'll take a wipe, clean down your learning surface. Doesn't take long at all. You'll be done. And you throw that wipe away, and you're good to go. At the end of class, at the end of your learning period, you'll get another one. Wipe down your surface when you're leaving. Throw away your wipe, and you're good to go. Now, some of you may question, uh, isn't that redundant? It's going to happen again when the next student comes in. Exactly. We're staying safe. All right, protocol for wearing a mask in school. Uh, everyone must wear a cloth 
mask over your nose and your mouth. An incorrect way of wearing this mask would be below the nose. You can't do that. You will be reminded to wear it above your nose. And obviously you can't wear it below your lips hanging around your neck. Uh, students who choose not to wear a mask or wear a mask improperly, uh, you will have a meeting with student services personnel, either myself or the deans, talking about proper mask wearing. Uh, if it happens again, we will have a meeting with your family. And after that, you very well could lose your right to going to school in the hybrid version here at North and you would have to go virtually. So please obey the mask rule, wear your mask properly. Now, if you choose to wear a face mask, that is fine, but you must wear a cloth mask underneath the face mask. You may not just wear a face mask over your face with no cloth mask. All right, hallways. What you're gonna see in the hallways are one-way stickers on the floor. And it will direct you to walk in one direction around the school. In some parts, you will see cross traffic. It'll go both ways. Now, these arrows are to be followed during passing times and when there's a lot of kids in the halls. Uh, you'll notice that that's uh, when students get to school, when they leave school, and when they pass between classes. Other than that, if you're leaving to use the restroom or you're walking down to student services, seeing a counselor, and nobody's in the halls, you don't have to follow the arrows. That's fine. Now, the reason we put these arrows down on the ground is for safety. We are trying to mitigate the amount of times we can infect each other. And by doing so, we get to stay in school here physically at North. Please do us all a favor and follow the arrows as they are marked. It does us all a favor and we get to stay in school longer. Do not, when you get to school, congregate or bunch together. I know a lot of you, when you get to school uh, in the past, or when you got to school in the past, you congregated in the commons or you congregated bunched together at the shield near the academic wing. We can't do that anymore. If you're coming into the commons and you, may, and you cannot get to class at that time, you'll have to sit at one of the tables that seats three to a table. Those uh, three seats are spaced six feet apart. Please don't move them apart from each other and don't move a chair from one table to the next to sit next to your friends. Um, I know it's gonna be hard to remember, but you have to do that. And if you don't, you're gonna be reminded to move the chair back and sit there. Uh, you're gonna to have to stay at that point until you're excused from the commons. Lockers, we won't be using lockers. You can use your book bags and take all your things with you wherever you go. Um, for water, the water fountains are all uh, bagged up. Uh, we've actually made it so you can't use water fountains. However, we do have water bottle filler stations. There's three of them in the school. And if you bring a water bottle, you can fill that up there. Now, if for some reason you don't have a water bottle, that's fine. We do have cups supplied at those water bottle fill stations. An added protocol this year uh, that everyone needs to understand uh, this was going to happen, COVID or not. Students, uh, phones. I'll keep this brief. Yeah, in the past, phones were, were a distraction in the classroom. Students were on them listening to music. They were texting each other, going onto websites. We desire, and this is how it's going to work, we desire when you come into class, that cell phone gets placed on silent or vibrate, put it below the desk face down face down because it will help, it'll help uh, when you're doing schoolwork or tests uh, to show that you're not cheating. But it's going to be in your possession below the desk. Uh, therefore, uh, the teacher does not have to touch your phone, does not, the teacher does not have to take your phone up to their desk or uh, hang it from um, the doorway, you know, if they had uh, one of those shoe racks where you put your, your phones into it. Uh, so please, when you come into the classroom, place it below your desk face down. Thank you. The library will be closed for second semester for general students and classes. Students can check out books via the library catalog. Uh, books will be pulled by library staff, bagged and delivered to ELA classrooms for hybrid students, or made available for curbside pickup for you virtual students. No classes will be allowed to use or work out of the library. Uh, LMC staff will work with staff for textbook and ELA bookroom materials checkout. And for those of you with fourth, fifth, sixth hour privileges, that will be held in the south end of the library.
Welcome back Appleton North. My name is Nate Werner and I'm the Activities Director and I am super excited to see you back in the hallways at Appleton North. It's been too long. Now as many of you may know, we've actually had many co-curricular clubs and activities and sports happening in the building on campus since last November. So for a lot of you, a lot of these procedures and protocols are not going to be new since we've already had many of our workouts and practices taking place both before and after school during the virtual model. So you've already heard Mr. Hermes and Mr. Lee talk about student support time. I want to re-emphasize how student support time will look for students involved in co-curricular activities. Clubs will be allowed to meet during the afternoon student support time. However, if a student, excuse me, if a teacher requests you, then you must see the teacher rather than attend that club meeting. If you have a flexible class at the end of the day and don't need to be in the building, but you still have practice after school, you may go home and return. But when you return to school, you need to go through the regular entrance check-in protocols for practice of the symptom check and hand washing that you're already used to. If you need to stay for student support time due to a transportation issue, or if you are requested by a teacher, you may, but you must stay in the commons or with the teacher until student support time ends. If you then need to use the locker room to change for practice, you may do so, but you will not be assigned a locker for athletics. So as you've heard from Mr. Hermes, uh, Mr. Lee, and Mr. Warner, a lot of information about uh, you know how we want uh, things to look, how we're looking at um, you know the safety, what the school day is going to kind of look like. So again, a lot of information uh, was kind of thrown at you in this video. So what we've done is we've set up some orientation times. Um, I know for freshmen and new to north students that have never actually maybe even been in our building before, that information already went out. Um, for the hybrid AA students, so in other words, freshmen and new to North students, on January 13th, we'll be offering an orientation. Um, busing is available and will be coming. Again, all that information was sent home, so please make sure you check that out. For the hybrid BB students in new to North, the date will be on the 20th of January. So again, opportunities for you to come in see what the school day is like, build a little community in your homerooms, and just get a feel uh, for what it's gonna be like to be on campus. Okay, for our upperclassmen, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, more information will follow. We will also offer some opportunities, um, open house type things for you to come in and check out the school. To kind of end with is, this is a, a picture that was taken of our staff you know, the, the caption really is, together we are stronger. I know I'm kind of in the way here, but uh, you know, the staff and administration is devoted to uh, continuing to work very hard each and every day um, because we want to continue to offer all of our students the opportunity to learn and grow. Uh, we continue to transition. Um, we're going to learn from the events and one another as we go through this process and make necessary changes as needed. I want to reemphasize that while this, isn't, while this won't always be easy, remember we talked about it one step at a time, and sometimes that, that isn't easy. Sometimes folks want to try to jump ahead, but it's not going to be necessarily easy. But remember, we are all in this together, okay? And all, you know, all of us need to do our part to make this transition back to school successful. So I want to thank each and every one of uh, our students and families of Appleton North. And remember, together we are stronger. Thank you.